by NSCC! It's the conclusion to the cliffhanger from last week's episode. We find out the definitive answer to whether or not the sports card market is in a bubble when the crew dissect the psychology of collecting. Coming up right now on SCC. Welcome to episode 20 of Sports Cards Culture. I'm Chris, here with Josh, Christina, and Nick. Today's episode is the second of our two-part series. Last week we asked the question, is the sports card market in a bubble? This week we will ask the question, what are the psychological motivations behind collecting? And we will hopefully discover some ways that the psychology of collecting can help us understand why sports cards have value. This, in turn, hopefully will help us identify when the market for a card has exceeded its value and might be in a bubble. But first, let's recap quickly what's a bubble. So Professor Schiller helped us lay out the three elements of a bubble. And it was brought to my attention how ironic it is that the guy's name is Schiller, the professor that we're referring to here. Uh, is it th- So the first element was, is an object trading at an increasing price? Is news of the increasing price leading to irrational optimism? And element three, are those increasing prices in excess of the object's real value? And the hardest part here, which we wrestled with last week, is trying to figure out what is a card's real value? So we looked at three examples last week where a bubble burst. All three had a rapid run-up in price, followed by an equally rapid crash before the card settled into a stable value. So it was pretty easy to look back in time, look backwards, and note that the card was trading in excess of its real value for a brief period of time. But what about if we want to spot bubbles as they're happening? That will require us to identify when a card's price has exceeded its real value in real time. And let's be clear, there's no easy way to do this, but I have some ways that might help. So sports cards are collectibles. A sports card has value because collectors would rather own it than have the money that it costs to buy it. So smart investors who might not possess the collector gene realize that they need to understand why cards are desired by collectors so that they invest in cards that have intrinsic value. They also need to understand when a card has reached a value beyond what a collector would be willing to pay for it, as Josh astutely noted last week. Otherwise, they can end up playing hot potato with overpriced cards. Okay, let's talk about the psychology of collecting now. What makes a card have intrinsic value to collectors? What even is a card's intrinsic value? This is where the psychology of collecting comes into play. If we can understand why people collect, perhaps we can understand why certain cards have intrinsic value to collectors. So I stumbled upon some literature about the psychology of collecting, and it's not specifically about sports cards, but it has some useful insights. I'm going to reference an article by Dr. Shirley Mueller that was written for Psychology Today called Collecting, an Urge That's Hard to Resist. Dr. Mueller is an internationally known collector and scholar of Chinese export porcelain, as well as a physician board certified in neurology and psychiatry. Her article gives eight different motivations that drive collectors to collect. So as I go through this article, I will ask Josh and Christina to help me connect its insights back to sports cards and see what Dr. Mueller's insights about collecting might be able to teach us about collecting sports cards, as well as why sports cards have value. So the goal here is to understand on a deeper level what motivates collectors so that we can better understand why sports cards have intrinsic value. Now before getting into the eight factors, the first thing that Dr. Mueller points out is that around 33 to 40% of the American population collects something. Around 33 to 40%. So let me stop here and ask Christina, does this line up with your experience? Do around 33 to 40% of Americans collect something? I would say it's more than that. More? Yeah. I would definitely say it's higher. Um, you have women who collect handbags, shoes, just because they re- like might sell them or uh, like flip them by or like at like Salvation Army, like flip them at Salvation Army or Goodwill. Doesn't mean they're not collecting them. Got it. Okay, Josh. Same question to you. Does it seem to you like thirty-three to forty percent of Americans collect something? Yeah, the question to me is more how much do you have to collect how active do you have to be in collecting to be considered a part of that 33 to 40 percent because i think christina's right i think everyone collects something to some degree you know um we got like a lot of people collect items around their home they collect money like everyone collects something they're always trying to find something to gather and, and obtain more of so the people that maybe are involved in uh slash obsessed to the level that we are i don't know if there's 
even 5% that are involved as much as we are, but I guess 33 to 40 is kind of like the nice average of potentially what I would think is true to be, you know, people who actively are involved in some sort of collecting hobby. As we all know, rarity can be an important component to the value of a collectible, but why? Dr. Mueller observes that the rarity of an item can stimulate certain parts of the brain that register uniqueness. She refers to a research project called the Oddball Experiment. Using an fMRI machine, researchers have observed that specific areas of the brain light up when subjects are shown a string of ordinary objects followed by an unusual one. So Dr. Mueller posits that this may be why we seek unique things when we collect it stimulates our brains in areas that are connected to our pleasure center. Christina, what do you think about Dr. Mueller's observation in the context of sports cards? Does coming across a rare sports card stimulate the brain's pleasure center? Definitely. I would definitely say that rare cards stimulate the pleasure center of your brain. All right, Josh, same question to you. Um, do you think encountering a rare sports card has a psychological effect on our brains? Yeah, I'm thinking of myself scrolling through Instagram or eBay and kind of seeing the same cards over and over. And then certain ones, you know, I stop scrolling because it's either I haven't seen it before or it's something that I haven't seen in a long time. And those are definitely gets you to stop because it's, you know, it's the same like LeBron, Topps Chrome, Fleer, Jordan kind of over and over. And then as a collector, I'm looking for that thing I've never seen before. So that's <laughs> that one hits pretty, pretty close to home there. It does, and I think about when people repost the same card over and over again on Instagram, and it actually makes something rare seem not rare anymore. It in and, and here we have psychological evidence to suggest stop doing that because you're actually uh, making it harder for that item to stimulate the brain's pleasure center. All right, uh, the second factor that Dr. Mueller points out um, that a contributing motive for some collectors is the pride in acquiring quote exquisite objects and josh would certainly know about the pride in owning exquisite objects dr mueller explains when searching for items quote excitement is further sharpened by identifying a rare piece that sets us apart from our peers and may provide recognition and admiration by associates furthermore the pride is quote heightened by gathering like items for the first time josh this seems to be quite insightful with respect to sports cards. Do Dr. Mueller's observations here ring true? Yeah, and here I'm applying this to when you're trying to acquire a card that you know others desire, such as you know an iconic set, a card that we all recognize as being iconic, and the, the word exquisite there really triggers me to think, you know, people know about the, the exquisite product, people know about National Treasures, you know, Prism Gold, Tops Chrome. These are the brands and things that that get a lot of people excited as a group. So you, as an individual, trying to acquire something you know others are going to desire when you own it, I think really really hits on what you're talking about there. It does. Uh, people bring great cards to shows or to trade nights, not to trade them or to sell them, but just to show them. People post in the social media groups on Facebook and everywhere else not for sale not for trade just want to show it and gain the admiration of my associates uh christina you remember once we went to a card show in la you brought one of your best cards and and when you took it out of your purse people were like oh this is such a cool card somebody took a picture with it and posted it to instagram do you think that's a, a part of collecting too? this admiration that owning a certain item brings definitely but let me just clear up the record right there someone told me to put it in my purse before we left so it's not like i wanted to show it off i was like i don't want people to know what i have but someone else was the one who wanted someone else wanted the admiration of their peers okay yes third factor <laughs> dr mueller adds that some collectors get a thrill from acquiring a piece at a modest price it brings them joy and pride to have made a wise decision quote it's the possession for comparatively little money that excites them christina does this ring true for sports card collectors yes and no i think that yes everyone wants a deal when you're collecting but when you have that exquisite rare item you're not afraid to tell people you paid more 
Josh, how impactful on this hobby is the phenomenon of experiencing joy at buying a card for a modest price? Is this a big motivator in collecting cards? Yeah, of course. And I actually don't even think of that question or that topic as being, uh, you know, getting it for a deal at the, in that moment, but thinking about it more longer term, you're saying like, hey, because, you, you know, we in the hobby love to say, you know, this card is worth X and I paid a tenth of that three years ago. So I think I think maybe that is a little bit more relevant to the psychology here. True. Uh all right, the fourth factor. Dr. Mueller observes that by collecting, we can feel, quote, closer to the past or to important people. Some collectors feel a sense of history when assembling precious items together. They also feel that they may build a legacy by passing on their collections to future generations. Josh, is this factor present in sports card collecting? Do people collect in order to feel closer to important people or past events? Are you sure this wasn't written four sports cards i mean i'm just like this is so eerie <laughs> like all of these are like the reasons that i collect it's just so it's so fascinating yeah i mean in this one this one's super easy you're just you're you're trying to connect to the players right the history of the sports the history of the the games if you're collecting pokemon or things like that the history of of all these things that's that's what it's all about and then you also touched on sort of building your own legacy maybe you know, passing your collection down to your children or, or even further than that. So I think a lot of people kind of fantasize or idolize about that concept. And it's definitely, it's definitely a factor. Christina, let me ask you about that notion of building a legacy by passing on a collection. Do you find that to be present in sports cards? I think you could also build a legacy without passing anything on, uh, phys like physical. Um, so I think that the legacy you could pass on the hobby right yeah. like the like you don't have to actually pass a lot like pass on your collection to future generations in order to pass a legacy of collecting and of the hobby to your family and children nice distinction i good i like that the fifth factor that dr mueller points out is that some collectors derive intellectual satisfaction from the collecting process because it requires discipline knowledge and a good eye to gather the right pieces in a specific area so josh do you find intellectual satisfaction to be present in sports card collecting as well i think we do yes yeah i mean we look for it so much that we, we you know we built a company around that that concept of trying to master the pricing of cards and you know how to find rare cards and the connection of it to the community and man there's just so many things i de you know definitely like in our day-to-day -day lives we may get stuck in the monotony of our day jobs and sort of the same thing over and over so the hobby is kind of this uh, this other way for us to flex our intellectual muscles and try to find things that are undervalued or try to find rare items that maybe others couldn't discover and it's just it's just another way to try to stimulate your your intellect it is. And Christina, do you, what can we add to that, if anything? I would agree with Josh. And I would also add on that um, you're also collecting the knowledge of like certain sets or certain cards of a player or a team that you want to add to your intellectual uh, repertoire. The sixth factor that Dr. Mueller brings up is that, quote, collectors gather treasures in order to enhance their network of friends. In other words, they have a social motivation for collecting perhaps the love of objects came first but then somewhere along the line they realize there are other people like themselves they may find them independently or join organizations of like-minded people friendships are forged and social lives are no doubt expanded end quote christina how important is this aspect of community to our niche of collecting sports card collecting i think it's vital you just have to look at 2020 when the whole world shut down and you didn't have any real social interactions outside of your uh residence your household and the hobby became a lifeline for a lot of people uh to have that social interaction that human need that like humans need um we're very uh, animalistic and like our primate nature is one of community and family and the hobby is a large family josh we've talked about this on previous episodes but for the sake of of this discussion what is your take on the value of community to sports card collecting yeah people try to find like what's the reason that sports cards have taken off 
in the last few years and I think the social aspect, social media and the community to me is one of the biggest driving factors outside of the, you know, the nostalgia reboot of our generation. But I think this is the next thing because, and we're not only just seeing it with sports cards, but all hobbies and and communities are really, are really driving this home here. And so I think, uh, I, I agree. I think it's incredibly vital. The seventh of the eight factors that Dr. Mueller presents goes like this. For some people, the enjoyment of, quote, arranging and rearranging a collection, end quote, can be a motivation to collect. It can be a way to exert control or exert influence over something. It can also simply be an exercise of organizational skills as a way as a demonstration of taste and knowledge. Christina, do collectors like to arrange and rearrange their collections? Definitely. How about when we open a prison box and you, oh, yeah. you immediately go through and you sort all the cards into the different insert sets and the different parallels and then you organize all the base cards yeah yeah it it's definitely fun. happens it's, it is it's definitely a fun aspect of the hobby josh same question to you does enjoyment of organizing things factor into why people like sports cards yeah that one's like a very personal thing you almost feel awkward or weird about how many times you reorganize your own collection at your at your home or wherever it is and it's like how many different ways can i top load these or sleeve these or slab guard them and regrade them and move them into this box on this shelf and then now I want to sort them I mean I've I've literally done every single possible binders I've tried every single way just to you almost just want the change it's kind of funny the way that you stated it. it's like there isn't one super optimal way you just want it different you just want to reorganize it's not, it's an excuse to to pull the cards out and keep looking at them the eighth and final factor in Dr. Mueller's article notes that anticipation fuels collectors I think she saved this one for last for good reason. She explains that the anticipation for acquiring an item is when the brain's pleasure center burns most brightly. She concludes that this helps explain why collecting transcends a mere pastime and becomes a passion. It gives sufficient pleasure such that that the participant wants to continue it more and more vigorously. <laughs> Christina, talk about the anticipation phase of sports card collecting. Is it as powerful as Dr. Mueller suggests? Definitely. I think we've all talked about this uh, on this show as well. Like the best time uh, when you're collecting a card is like right before it hits your mailbox <laughs> because uh like you you have the anticipation of you're searching for something and then you have the anticipation of like is that offer going to be accepted can i make this deal happen like am i going to win this auction and then it's the anticipation of i hope it doesn't get lost in the mail and <laughs> i hope it arrives on time and what do you mean it's going to be here by 8 p.m you said it was going to be here by 12 p.m um and then you have it in hand finally and it's like that's amazing but what's next we'll see and that what's next is what dr mueller is getting at right she's saying that's how it goes from pastime to passion is right. because you want to recreate and re-experience that anticipation all over again once it's passed okay that sounds more like an addiction (laughs) you're chasing the dragon that's exactly the phrase i I see the parallels big time there um now christine talked about mail day and i'm glad you did because that dovetails for the question to josh you're welcome because on a recent episode of the crossover after getting a question on a similar topic josh and i decided that seeing a card that we are hunting pop up on ebay is probably more thrilling than getting a big mail day. So, Josh, do you think that, like Dr. Mueller suggests, it is the thrill of anticipation that can transform collecting from pastime to passion? Yeah, that moment for sure is my favorite. And that that moment like completely describes the anticipation of everything that's going to come up until the mail day and, 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 you know, adding it to the collection and stowing it away or sending it off to the bank or whatever so that one moment that you described is like the beginning of that journey where it's like oh there it is on ebay and i've i joked on the crossover that once i see it it's like time to block out everything let me go to my my safe space in my office get my phone out you know crack the knuckles get ready to go this is going to be a this is going to be a long one so true so true okay so we've gone over dr mueller's eight motivations that drive collectors there are surely more as well that she didn't touch on 
Uh, but the point of this exercise has been to understand what drives people to collect so that we can begin to understand why certain cards appeal to collectors and why others don't. So that we can understand why certain cards have intrinsic value, which drives collectors to prefer to own them rather than to have their cash equivalent, even when the cash equivalent is quite large. A different, more subtle takeaway from this discussion for me is that there are a lot of psychological foundations that support the appeal of collecting. And those foundations are, as we discovered today, definitely present in sports card collecting. Collecting cards resonates with all sorts of emotional and psychological aspects of our lives. It goes well beyond simply making money by having smart buys and smart sells. Although that certainly is, as Dr. Mueller points out, one factor that influences some collectors. Collecting stimulates the pleasure centers of our brains, it enhances our social lives, and it gives us intellectual satisfaction. So circling all the way back now to the initial question of whether or not the sports card market as a whole is in a bubble, I would reply that so long as we remain human beings who are driven to collect, I don't see why people would stop enjoying the process of collecting sports cards. So, Josh and Christina, are there any final remarks on the psychology of sports card collecting? Yeah, I mean, the I guess the that final question of like, are we in a bubble? I, I, I was thinking about that, and it's like the other things that we know to be bubbles and have have burst in the financial markets. They're not. They're none of those things that you just described, right? They're none of those eight factors. There's, it's not a collectible in a lot of cases, and if it is, it's a financially driven collectible and the outcome the goal is usually just to make money and in this case there's eight very distinct goals uh that that it sounds like maybe one of those was financially driven maybe two and the rest were just more about stimulating your mind and and your your uh you know enjoyment happiness for being alive as a human so that's it's a very interesting take and you know people talk about wanting to see like a documentary on sports cards i want to see the documentary that connects sports cards to that just because you know it applies to so many things and not just cards but all hobbies and that would just be fantastic content i think it's like this this layer of of the hobby that not a lot of people have explored so i this i think this is great christina i think josh summed that up perfectly and i don't need to say anything as usual he did uh (laughs) nice all right That will do it for episode 20 of Sports Cards Culture, our first ever two-part feature, maybe more in the future. Thanks for tuning in. See you guys next week. Thanks for watching. Tell us in the comment section below what the crew should cover next week, and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time at SCC Sports Cards Culture.